Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, let me remind you this was uh, this example with Stirling formula. We have x and c, and we have volume element dx here. Yeah? But one can write like this: is df is equal to dx minus one dx. Yeah, and if we denote by y is exponent of x, then df is equal to y minus one divided by one, and volume is equal to dy o y. Yeah, so I denote it by alpha. So you can see it's uh, secretly the whole thing is algebraic. So we have more general situation. We have let's say algebraic variety over C, and we have closed one form. And suppose we have um, volume element. Again, uh, uh, simplify my life. I assume that my uh, uh, primitive for my form has more singularity, so alpha has isolated zeros with multiplicity one zeros. What will J say? With multiplicity one, so it's equivalent to the fact that this. Uh, uh, <coughs> Local has more singularities. And uh, I should assume some extra conditions, uh, kind of no zeros at infinity. I can maybe tell later a little bit more precise what does it mean. Uh, so an, an appropriate quantification uh, uh, form has no zeros on strata at infinity. Uh, then we can produce uh, a bunch of series associated to each point. And series, uh, something called IJ formal. And uh, lift, OK, yeah. OK, fine, yeah. It's by definition, it will be series in uh, h bar, defined up to sign, uh, namely what you do. Uh, you uh, consider asymptotic expansion of a uh, falling integral, take uh, first to make this normalization. And uh, now uh, I choose a function in the neighborhood of my points. Uh, to have value zero. Uh, then it will be uniquely characterized as a point, and then I integrate exponent minus function divided by h bar. And here consider maybe truncated dimple, not, not, not going to infinity, it doesn't affect asymptotic expansion, times volume element. So I get uh, this uh, mm, finite collection of series, and And theorem uh, is that uh, this finite collection of series with certain uh, uh, certain analytic wall crossing structure uh, will form a certain pack package.
so what does it, uh, yeah, so this is something which we can formulate in uh, kind of classical terms of Borelli Borelli summation. Uh, you, you, you make this series, uh, any of the series, uh, take a Borel transform uh, yeah, yeah, so, so my series IJ formal will be sum of CJK is bar to power K and we make Borel transform sum of CJK divided by K factorial and here you just start at zero, start uh, make series in zeta it's uh, analytically, it will be analytic in zeta, and if you extend, you'll have potentially countably many singularities, and uh, singularities will be logarithms multiplied by the same things in shifted variables, and mm, mm, this will be generalization of this example with uh, uh, Stirling formula. Uh, oh, here there are uh, following troubles. If you have like curves of maybe high genus or like genus 2 even and have this one form and, and then uh, the singularities will be periods of my one forms. Integrals of one form so one zero to another zero. So it converges in what domain? In, in certain domain it converges, it's, it's, it has some positive derivatives convergence but then it should be extended to a uh, function in the star shape domain and it will have infinitely many uh, singularities. Uh, the star sharp domain have infinitely many rays. Mm. Mm -hmm. so the whole complex plane well, no, complex plane is not infinitely many cuts. But if you go around the cut, it will be a logarithm of the same function times uh, uh, these things. Yeah. So, so well-defined function on the, com on the on some cover of the on some cover. Yeah, it's actually a bit uh, hard to say which cover. Uh, 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 and you get a sh uh, you don't get a local system because eventually if, uh, if you try to analyze these things in the uh, whole totality uh, you'll have uh, certain lattice uh, uh, maybe I'll say, say what is the lattice here the lattice will be first homology group of your variety y and consider set of zeros which is set of this form points pi with integer coefficients. You have this uh, uh, finite rank lattice and it maps to uh, model torsion. It maps to, to oh, sorry, <laughs> Mix, mixed lattice, maps by central charge to complex numbers by integration of my form alpha. Uh, you integrate over pass, connect to points or, or closed loops. And this lattice, uh, uh, or at least first homology of y without zeros, uh, can have rank, arbitrary large rank, and the image will be everywhere dense set of points. Yeah, so it will be uh, kind of a bit pathological situation. You get infinite uh, a dense set of singularities of the function, and uh, when you try to reconstruct function by uh, making a ray which avoid uh, uh, bad directions, yeah, and make Laplace transform, I have really no idea whether the integral will be convergent. It's kind of, it seems to be a very de delicate question in dynamical systems, maybe depend on approximation of irrational numbers or rational numbers. Yeah, so, so there's some subjects which we don't really want to dwell in, yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, at least, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, whether it's convergence and, and then, uh, 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 by kind of by usual summation, you get kind of really ugly things. You get uh, maybe maybe it's conversion, but there are uh, complements to countably many rays will be uncountably many ray, uncountably many domains. Like if you uh, remove all rational direction, get and then you get uncountably many functions. Yeah, and I don't know. I, I like I prefer countable <laughs> something which you can write concretely. Is it, is this not the which uncountable uh, the rays are. Yeah, the number of uh, if you consider kind of components of rays which do not go to the six, it will be like complement. Uh, you you, you consider are, you all rays. Your angles form countable set. No, no, but these things are everywhere dense. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, and uh, so this new language, uh, which has uh, suggestions, can overcome these difficulties. And um, mm, yeah, so, so endless analytic continuation one can see in old language, but uh, how to make Borel transform uh, and whether one should really make tra Borel transform, it will be answered better with language of its analytic wall crossing structure. So that's kind of main advantage of this language. Now, so that's, uh, th that's the theorem which I want to uh, this. And in fact, here, this uh, analytical crossing structure, this kind of collection of stock synthesis, this complicated thing, it's, it's, it's uh, not, on, not, not only analytic, but rational in certain sense, and which I'll explain to you uh, mm. later. And so it's uh, and rational, it means that you get some rational uh, m a matrix valued functions with rational coefficients in, in uh, um, certain some variables. Can you explain again what, what is going to be uncomfortable? Sorry? You said something would be uncomfortable? No, no, if you can, if in original formulation, if you want to construct a uh, uh, function in H bar uh, by making Lap Laplace, uh, Laplace transform of this guy, you should integrate over the ray. But its function will be defined in some sector, and it depends on the choice of rays. Choose different rays uh, up to homotopy. But there's no homotopy because it's, it's very, very dense. You get really uncomfortably many uh, things. And if all periods of your one form are rational plus I rational, then you still get uncomfortably. You, yeah, you, you get rational. You get for each irrational number, you should get a function in a certain sector. But that is assuming that really all the singularities happen in the principal sheet, isn't, isn't there a principal sheet with slightly less? No, no, you think no. that we all be... All, all of them, yeah, yeah. We, actually, with Anton, we're very, very familiar it's, uh, with the story. It's, uh, there's a kind of uh, some science in uh, sub-science of dynamical systems called interval exchange map or uh, quadratic differentials. And here it's you typically have, uh, the people really study dynamics of things, they have things dense in, uh, like billiards and you, uh, you get things really. So there is no principal branch with No, 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 no. No, there's no principal branch at all, yeah. For one form. For one form, yeah, for example, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so ma ma maybe I now uh, see a little bit about uh, return to this notion of analytical crossing structures. I should have a lattice, like here this, this lattice, and I have some Lie algebra, uh, Lie algebra uh, graded by this uh, lattice. Lie algebra. Yeah, again, if you uh, go this concrete example, this Lie algebra will be uh, direct sum over pairs of zeros. Uh, and you consider by not of, uh, or you consider classes in, uh, set of classes in relative homology, such that Boundary of the things, it's difference of these two points, which I denote something like PG1 minus PG2. And this is definitely labeled by element of gamma. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so consider that uh, elements of my. Six is the roughly path connecting this two point up to homotopy, and it's a it's a associative algebra. You can compose uh, two, two paths and get 
another path, and if it's, you cannot compose state zero, and this associative algebra, and take Lie algebra of this, but this associative algebra is isomorphic, not canonically. to matrices of this uh, of size set of uh, my mark points, uh, uh, zeros with coefficients in uh, Laurent polynomials in where M is a rank of first homology of Y modular torsion. It's it's really matrix mallet functions with uh, coefficients in Laurent series, Laurent polynomials, and I take associated Lie algebra. Yeah, that's how things it looks in our example, uh, and we have this Lie algebra and analytical crossing structure. It's some, something about this Lie algebra in gradient lattice. So it's we have a map, which is concrete map in our example have additive map and so you can explain again so you have this pass algebra which you just provide <laughs> associative algebra and then you went to this associative algebra this it's the same yeah Why? ah because you, you can do choose a uh, homoto uh, can pass from each uh, element to some base point and then it will be just choice of ma matrix element and uh, ambiguity. Oh, just a second, I'll take a water. Yeah, in fact, uh, in fact, for n f n next speaker, there is a water yes, over under here. <laughs> she didn't have to go. Back. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the story is the following: you get uh, uh, C plane with the values of my central charge. We get some kind of high-dimensional space which maps here, and I get a kernel of. Uh, this, uh, um, on the central charge make real and uh, 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 the analytic wall crossing structure was described by some um, can be specified uh, non uniquely it, de it depends up to users some initial things you choose finite collection of rays And for each ray, you choose certain cone. Yeah, maybe I just I choose a cone. Uh, uh, which project properly as a, as a picture with the following. It's cone in some high dimensional space. And to the plane, it projects to lay ray and something which is Uh, strictly uh, less than 90 degrees on both sides, some angle sector, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so get uh, these cones, and these cones can overlap up uh, in high dimensional space, and the projections can also overlap uh, uh, downstairs. And uh, what you glue uh, from these things, you glue uh, a, an analytic bundle. Over uh, on on C uh, on this H plane C uh, <coughs> by the following thing it's uh, it will be uh, trivialized a uh, bundle will be of rank number of, of uh, zeros 
maybe I do not something like rank. Uh, you called it n before. Called n. Ah, yeah. Okay, called n. Yeah. N will be number of zeros. I think you call it m. No m. No, no a, a, the rank of h1 over m is rank of h1, yeah. yeah but without zeros, it's a different. Yeah, and n will be n, n will be rank of uh, 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 number of zeros, and so the rank of this group will be n plus m minus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you sure is it whole line or just a disk? Yeah, uh, actually on the disk, yeah. Yeah, it will be not on the whole plane, but on, on a small disk. Uh, uh, how, how, so it will be tri uh, trivialized outside of disks, outside of the rays. It will be trivialized outside of rays, and and the jump transformation will be element a, whatever a k. Uh, for each, uh, I don't know, ray LK, uh, which is exponent of some, it's logarithm, and logarithm belongs to some kind of completion of uh, Lie algebra, maybe associated to this cone. Sorry? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, it belongs to. to um, to uh, the following six. We have a cone and we have, or maybe here, we have a cone and had all integer points inside this cone uh, and consider um, part of my Lie algebra where uh, graded components lie strictly inside this cone. It will be, uh, it will be nil uh, kind of, you can make a filtration, get pro nil potent completion and uh, take element of this uh, thing, you get uh, certain Potently group and take logarithm element, but uh, if you don't, uh, yeah, so, so I consider a certain element, and the main property of this guy should be analytic. Uh, so this logarithm, the coefficients of this series should be grow no more than exponentially. And, and this will imply for me. Mm, a certain matrix valued function on, on uh, defined on a neighborhood uh, on, on some uh, finite interval depending on radius of convergence uh, for this LJ. So, what AK belongs to what? To the completion of. Completion, yeah, pronil potent completion, yeah. This pr product of elements of Lie algebra. Maybe I'll take the following. This local K, kind of a priori. For formal things, it belongs to product of for gamma non equal to zero belongs to cone k and gk instead of inf direct sum get infinite sum, but in fact it belongs to kind of uh, exponential growth part growth condition. Probably g gamma. G gamma, yeah, right. right. Ah no no! Th these are not uh, these rays are not projections of uh, elements of lattice at all. It's something which I choose at will. Yeah, uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, yeah, and then I, I, I said that it's it gives me some analytic structure, and I said there is some equivalence relation can cut and move rays, and uh, uh, which doesn't change uh, something. This choice is actually. Sorry? This choice is actually of the race. Choices? Of the race. I can change, ra I can move race, I can ch uh, uh, change a little bit cone. Uh, yeah, there was uh, several um, movements which do not change something uh, interesting because. Uh, uh, According to my definition, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, which I explained. But why do you want the algebra? Why don't you keep it? 
No, no, here it's associative algebra. But uh, in fact, uh, uh, with Jan, we consider differently algebra. Uh, one can repeat definition. Uh, 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 namely, you consider if you have a lattice gamma. Okay, z to you know some, some l, yeah, uh, uh, lattice of finite rank. Uh, then what we can consider, uh, we consider polynomial vector fields. On, uh, on the dual torus. Yeah, and it's automatically graded because uh, you can see the commutation is uh, shifts and um, and it's no source to algebra. So, uh, no, this is a different, um, uh, this, uh, in fact, uh, in, in certain sense, one considers this guy as a particle class of this guy, because here what we do, we consider matrix valued function on a torus. But matrix valued function will be the same as vector field on the total space of trivial bundle, which are linear on the fiber. So it will be particle class of vector fields on a total space. Yeah, it's kind of a bit ugly embedding, but uh, one can, changing rank, one can embed one to another. And uh, this story is uh, the definition. We wrote a paper on electricity for in this language, but it, uh, this is kind of Young Mills and gravitational type the algebras, mm. and they appear in what's called four D wall crossing. It's two D wall crossing. Okay. But but it's you want to explain how you get from your main example this data? Sorry, you have main example today. Yes, yes. Form, yeah, yeah, I will explain how you get these things it eventually, yeah. Uh, uh, <coughs> Maxim, what is the condition here in Sophie? You have written analytic here and exponential. What is this uh, uh, Sorry? So what is that statement? Uh, 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 no, my, my Lie algebra is kind of um, finite dimensional each degree. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, here it's actually one dimension, and for vector fields it's uh, uniformly finite dimensional, and it's a kind of uniform notion of norms. And uh, um, the condition that element of Lie algebra is uh, because it's in a cone, you choose choose a projection uh, like distance uh, pr uh, pr 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 along this ray. Uh, you said that this coefficients grow no more than exponent times this, this distance. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I have to say that it in, in vector field case, you don't put condition on logarithm. It's it's a wrong uh, uh, way to do things. You put condition on a group element. Uh, uh, like if you have a germ of uh, dimorphism, um, uh, analytic map, identity plus high order terms, its logarithm could be uh, very well could be not analytic. It's also part of this resurgent game uh, called the Calvaronian theory, which really fits in this. Yeah, so it's uh, in, in true sense, you put condition of exponential growth on AK itself, not, not on logarithm. <coughs> okay, but in, for matrix valued functions, it's, it's the same. Because exponential map, it's locally uh, uh, bijection for this infinite dimensional groups. Yeah, so get, uh, so that was this kind of abstract story. Uh, uh, if you have this, you have this gluing, and then it, you have bundles which is also trivialized not only outside of rates, it's also trivialized over formal power disk, formal power series neighborhood of H bar, and you get invariant in a kind of a strange coset space, which is JL n over a ring of uh, analytic germs, function of bar modular JLN of a formal power series. Uh, Sorry? Oh, I mean left to right? No, no, no. That's no. the smaller thing. Sorry? You push formal the formal the oh, sorry, you are completely right, yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the quotient of uh, big group by small group. Um, I recall you what are possible transformations. For example, you have this description, which you can just uh, say that your data, like a position of ray, you just rotate a little bit. If it's strictly less than 90 degrees, it will be this, the same. But you don't change the cyclic order of this race. Or, or, or you can increase one of these rays, or eventually you can maybe cut these things in two pieces, decompose in, uh, your element and product in one direction, and separate a little bit rays. So the, uh, when you glue the things, you do not change this invariant. You, don't, you can identify canonical this. You have holomorphic bundle, trivialized in the formal neighborhood of a point, oh, which is what it here says, and that's, that gives the element of this, the same element of this cassette which you mm, want to keep. Uh, the same. Now, so there is this notion of um, analytical crossing structure. Uh, there is a formal notion uh, when you don't put condition of co uh, constraints, but you move the same movement of formal wall closing structure. And uh, there is a kind of classification. Uh, uh, if you put uh, in all this game, uh, w w what is going on? You got just finitely many cons, but the, each of them s uh, stay far away from the kernel. And because they're finitely many, they f uh, stay f universally f far away the kernel. You, you pick some maybe quadratic form of signature to something, which will be positive definite here and negative definite here. And uh, you say that all your cones stay uh, in, in negative doma d uh, domain. And if you f fix this bound, which come naturally from geometry of things on manifold at the end of the day. Uh, this classification is the following. Uh, again, you choose your, uh, this auxiliary race for which you put for the description in, in a way as you like. Uh, you need at least three of them because you need maybe uh, to have mm. 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 Uh, only if you, uh, 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 so, sorry, what, what, what's, uh, what will be the classification? It's a bit hard to, uh, one can write in many words, but uh, what you do is consider complement uh, the possible support of this uh, gammas which appear in, in this expression. It will be uh, complement to this guy. And you divide by several domains here by hyperplanes, uh, which not, uh, do not pass through the vertical direction but close to it, and copper planes which are rational. Yeah, so the word rational will have several meanings here. You've put several rational copper planes, but uh, because they cannot really align with this, uh, uh, this kernel of central charge, who's some kind of very rational guy, it cannot pass through this. When you project, uh, you, uh, project these things, you get a little bit overlapping, uh, overlapping um, mm. uh, angle sectors. And what you do, uh, uh, you, this will be your con uh, uh, this will be my cones, uh, in between this direction, and I put arbitrary analytic elements in cone k, and uh, in order not to uh, repeat my information twice, I consider this kind of semi-closed cone. It will be closed on this side, but 
open on another side. So the integer vec uh, vectors lying on the boundary will belong to, uh, will belong to the kind of next cone. So, uh, so I, I never repeat my information. So, uh, so what are uh, Fourier coefficients of my uh, elements of Lie algebra? They're all distinct elements. And the claim that it's really kind of one to one corresponds with all these equivalence classes are given by finite collection of analytic transformations. Um, but with a precise condition that uh, this mon that monomials which appear in this transformation belong to specific subsets. And uh, the kind of drawback of this, uh, the things which is kind of a bit unpleasant, I, I can prove the theorems only if I use this rational hyperplanes. I cannot use hyperplanes which are compatible with uh, irrational hyperplanes co compatible with corrections because it leads to very unpleasant questions, which may be true, but I don't want to answer them. Uh, uh, and, and then there was a kind of very uh, mm, uh, again, I, re I recall why this rational hyperplanes play so important role in in this uh, business. Uh, it's because of uh, the following kind of basic lemma, which uh, uh, remind you: if you have element in uh, G L, let's say N. Uh, there is uh, uh, some lemma just in two variables. Mm. If I have matrix If you have a matrix valued function, uh, uh, depending on two parameters, q1 and q2, uh, uh, and sup uh, suppose have matrix valued with uh, two parameters which, and it's convergent for small q1, q2, you can uniquely decompose in the product of two, two guys, uh, but here uh, a priori can put form of power series. And uh, to make it really unique, you maybe should ask uh, that uh, Taylor uh, monomials which appear in logarithm of a minus don't have diag uh, diagonal terms. So it will be really unique decomposition. And the theorem that uh, this actually uh, canonical factors are also analytic. So what does it say, Q and Q1 and Q2? Oh, just two variables. No, it is good. I see three symbols. I don't understand what it says. Ah, it's, it's analytic uh, functions in product of Q1, Q2, and Q... Oh, 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 it's a product. It's a product, yeah. There's no comma. Ah, no comma, yeah. 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 Uh, so, so it's... Uh, so those are... Yeah, but for example, constant matrices uh, where you put in A plus... No, 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 but I assume, uh, for example, I assume that logarithm of A, logarithm of A minus uh, doesn't contain terms which is... It doesn't contain q1, q2 to some positive degrees. And constant matrices, I assume that matrices are equal to, both equal to identity at zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, the basic lemma, which has kind of a bit long history. Uh, and uh, again, I r r remind you briefly how how one can prove it. Uh, the idea is the following: you take uh, Mm. 
a second. Now consider some kind of double cassette space, uh, 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 like matrix valid function, model two trivialization depending on Q1, Q2. <coughs> that one can understand geometrically is a set of uh, vector bundles on the following things. You consider uh, such a domain sitting in P1 cross P1. You consider either uh, points where Q1 equal to 0 and Q2 runs up to, to infinity or Q2 equal to 0. Can uh, form a neighborhood of two uh, projective lines. And consider bundles on this, these guys which are trivial on vertical and horizontal uh, uh, things of P1. Then the same is the same as double coset space. It's uh, because you can trivialize it on these things. It's, it's uh, ambiguity depends on series and Q1. You can trivialize on other things and then get overlap identification. So that's exactly what you say in this double coset language. Yeah, so it's described dramatically as a set of bundles with some open condition. And now how to see this decomposition, uh, it's uh, uh, the following. P1 cross P1, maybe it make a little bit even bl blow up at two angle points. Then you get, in, in this domain, you get three families of, uh, uh, three one parameter families of P1s, and consider bundles which are trivial on each three of them. And if you consider one comparison, you get one double coset, get another comparison, you get essentially A plus, another essentially A minus. Yeah, so it's, uh, uh, that was a basic argument. And uh, uh, what was historical origin? It was wall crossing with polynomial vector fields originally. It, was more, it started with Jan with more complicated wall crossing, called 4D wall crossing, for some simplectomorphisms. And then, uh, you have this DT invariant story, and then when you make calculations, see that you get a bunch of transformations which are algebraic. Yeah, for example, if you have, instead of JLN, uh, you, you do the same story in more complicated uh, setting with uh, different morphisms, and you get kind of like rational maps, in decomposed to things, you get algebraic maps. Yeah, and in this DT invariance, you get plenty of uh, complicated algebraic functions. Uh, but what goes on here uh, in the uh, case of matrix valued functions, if you look on this argument, uh, you see that there's something really remarkable goes on. If you get this series belong to rational function, it's, it's, it's not only uh, convergent and zero, but it's actually rational function. This a plus and a minus will be again rational functions. But rational, not in, set, not in the sense of rational hyperplanes, <laughs> but in the sense of rational functions for many variables. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the rational functions, uh, if you extend the form post series, obviously anal analytic, and uh, this theorems, uh, the analyticity follows from the fact it's rational functions. And uh, so you see it's kind of really, mm, kind of finite amount of information. You, 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 you cut at will this domain in your finitely many domains with rational hyperplanes. You get kind of finitely many kind of integer coefficients. <laughs> and then you get rational valued matrix function, which in fact in this case will have integer coefficients. So, yeah, so you get some kind of some finite amount of information how to, to encode this uh, wall crossing structure for this case of one form. Uh, and uh, that's kind of manageable part of uh, this hu huge st story. And as we'll see uh, later for what we see in Chern Simons, we get not rational functions, but modular forms. Uh, but still, uh, kind of the whole thing is in code in some nice algebraic data. And uh, this one form is kind of intermediate example between uh, uh, just finitely many singularities and 
more complicated world to have. Mm. Uh, complicated, uh, tricky picture. Yeah, so now probably I ha have to go explain a little bit how one can prove the theorem. Ah, ah, just before going on, I want to say that uh, to check this criteria, you see that it's uh, something very unwieldy. You, you, you divide things by not by different uh, kind of slightly uh, tilted hyperplanes. Uh, if central charge is rational in subsense, in the sense that Z of gamma belongs to, let's say, Gaussian integers. And real, real part and imaginary part will be interesting things. Uh, uh, one can, uh, there's no such troubles, one can do the following things. So cho choose kind of rational race in R2. You choose a rational race, then you get a canonical contribution for this each uh, an angle sectors, and this canonical contribution should be rational as a rational fu function of several variables. So we have to rationally use in three different <laughs> ways. Yeah, uh, is rational matrix valid function. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, eventually want to ha have a central charge to be rational and it needs certain amount of work. Yeah, so now return to my situation. You get uh, function and uh, variety and one form, yeah? Get variety of complex numbers and closed one form. Um, yeah. Let's assume for simplicity this y is compact. Uh, this condition of uh, infinity, maybe I'll skip it in, in my lecture because it's a bit l long story. Uh, so I have one form, uh, have compact, then uh, for each direction we take We take a closed uh, uh, real one form, a real closed one form, and it has again isolated zeros. Uh, and as a real, uh, it's a derivative of a real function, a real function has more index, more index. It's kind of the same as dimension, complex dimension of x. It's kind of middle, middle more syntax, the same number of positive and negative. Right, is y. Oh, oh, sorry, y, yeah. And then uh, you see that uh, generically should be no gradient lines, uh, because uh, they have the same Morse index, there's kind of no differential in, in Morse complex. And then there was, uh, very long time ago, it was, there was something like morse Novikov theory. If you have, in general, close, uh, uh, real one form with, like more close one form with more singularities, but maybe it's arbitrary Morse indices, you, you can start to count gradient lines and get certain complex. Here get no no differential, and uh, 
Uh, and what I claim is that, ah, so what, is, what, what does this morse noikov theory uh, gives you? It gives us, uh, you get ob obvious complex, or morse noikov complex. Uh, was over uh, some field which are uh, uh, like fractional powers uh, real, uh, infinite uh, series is real pa powers of some variable and for each gradient line from one point uh, to another point you, uh, you associate a term t to the integral of alpha it will be a positive number and you get uh, uh, some complex of this ring and what is uh, calculated by this complex it's actually if you look on literature it's not wasn't really properly stated what does it calculate the claim it's quasi isomorphic to cohomology of y with coefficients in the local system uh, given by uh, monodromia long pitch group is equal to exponent of integral of this uh, so your, your alpha is alpha theta, right? It, to integral alpha theta. Alpha theta, yeah, alpha theta, yeah. Yeah, consider a local system over this uh, uh, manifold with coefficients is no field, or of rank one, and it calculates its uh, its cohomology. Mm. Yeah, that's a general story. So now what goes on in, in this complex case example? In this, uh, 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 here get kind of, um, uh, in a complex case, because we don't really we integrate form alpha, not alpha theta. Yeah. So instead of we consider not a field but a ring, uh, we consider int complex powers of my variable. But uh, so we consider some so C J T to lambda J where real part of lambda j goes to plus infinity, something like this. You can see the such uh, 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 infinite sums, set of such infinite sums. What was the local system uh, could you say again? Ah, it's a local system of the Snoiko field. Uh, the monodromy around this loop, it's a power of variable, this uh, dummy variable t, which is integral of one form along this loop. Yeah, uh, yeah, so you should consider maybe uh, this ring and. Uh, but you cannot multiply this. Sorry? You cannot multiply this. Piece. You can multiply, sure. So, uh, Samsa goes to plus infinity. Ah, I can say, ah, okay, it goes to infinity. Infinity, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a ring, and uh, so in, uh, you identify, uh, so you get this identification, and one can uh, uh, maybe make a little bit more. So you get this canonical, you get canonical uh, local system L theta uh, with monodromy along the slope is equal to t, t, t exponent minus I theta integral of complex my form about the slope. Uh, and get this canonical uh, local system and uh, in a complex case it's uh, 
it will be the same. And uh, this, okay, maybe what I want to say is that for, for generic theta, for non stock theta, not equal to the ver so it's not equal to argument of z of gamma for gamma in my Lie algebra. Uh, uh, for non stock direction, uh, I claim uh, there will be no, no more differential. And the claim that uh, we have canonical isomorphism. of a cohomology of my uh, of my manifold y with coefficients this sigma L theta with direct sum of one dimensional space and basis vector corresponding to uh, uh, my uh, um, points uh, pj and um, why it's the isomorphism is canonical we have a complex manifold and in definition of uh, most complex we choose some remaining metric but now we choose Hermitian matrix not even Keller metric choose any Hermitian metric Uh, to draw more complex, and then we get gradient lines, uh, stable and unstable manifolds, and the claim uh, that on this, uh, for any Hermitian metric, if theta is not stocks, uh, this uh, uh, left shot symbols, which I start to draw from different points, they never int uh, touch each other. There's no gradient lines. The story is the following: you go to universal cover. Then my function will be uh, will be global holomorphic function, and then imaginary part of minus e c t alpha will be constant along uh, along uh, uh, the sig. And so under projection, uh, the projector really straight lines, and because we choose um, this not generic thing, they, they never intersect. Yeah, so, and, and this space of Hermitian metric is contractible. So we have this contractible sp uh, set of identification. So this is really canonical identification. And so, so after changing the ring, the rings are different, right? It's local system of this, this ring. But but you chose a smaller ring when you take a theta. No, 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 no. Oh, no? no, I just uh, some dummy All variable. All of them have just this bigger one. You don't restrict to the ones that are alpha theta periods. No, no, no. no. Yeah, no, of course, one can make little. Uh, yeah, one can do a bit more, more, more accurate things. But, uh, but uh, here you get this canonical isomorphism, and if you do slightly different direction, you get different isomorphism, and the contribution of sector between them is different. Uh, a ratio of two canonical isomorphisms. Yeah, it's, it's all. Uh, so that's a dis description of what is going on. But in fact, here it's a little bit more. Uh, one can say uh, like this: It's also one can, uh, this local system L theta. Uh, I, I can I, I said what's more than Roman volume six, but actually one can say it's local system trivialized at each point, such that as it holonomy it's in, t to power integral of one form from pass from one point to another. Actually, this local system L theta is trivialized at every point. Of why? Uh, of why? No. Of yes? No, 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 of why? Uh, how? Sir? Or you can trivialize it zeros at, at any minute. Zero. Yeah, no, you can uh, you can define the following. You consider, uh, 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 I just want to consider a trivial local system. I want to say what is parallel transport from one point to another, yeah? Along the path. I take it multiplication by t to power integral of the path. It's kind of like gives a connection in trivial bundle. And form. Now, so it's actually trivialized, but in particular trivialized at zero, yeah? And you can also multiply by f uh, connection uh, local system uh, trivialized at zeros. And local system with kind of like small monodromia. Uh, 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 Monodrome will be just 
let's say, complex numbers, not powers of t. Of rank one, yeah, rank one, rank one trivialized zeros, and if you consider local system trivialized zeros, you get actually dual torus to this gamma, yeah. And what is going on? You get in certain domain, in certain a priori non-Archimedean domain, in the torus, home gamma to uh, to gem. Uh, we get a bundle uh, 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 which realize this cohomology of y with coefficients in uh, uh, local systems. So local system will be kind of small deformation of this. Uh, I think it's very big uh, monodromia. Actually, let me tell you a few words how to say what is what this means this domain and. So it's just a question from the chairman to the organizers. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What was the question? Well, it was already... Uh, uh, one hour, yeah. It's, yeah, okay. I'll finish in uh, one minute, maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I just want to say that uh, is this... Um, uh, what this really goes on, you, you can see this, this uh, tor uh, torus, yeah? T is home from gamma to gem. It, uh, 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 using this collection of cones which you can extract from geometry, you can construct a toric variety. This collection of cones. Yeah, a priori which one to play with, yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, the ones you were talking there. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. You have this uh, uh, cyclic ordered sequence of convex cones. So you get cones of top dimension of co-dimension one, and here it goes to, uh, in mirror picture, it goes to points in, uh, in projective lines, because top dimension cones goes to point in toric variety. And uh, what here goes on? In the formal neighborhood of these things, you trivialize your, uh, your bundle of cohomology. In bundle of cohomology is some algebraic story. You, you consider uh, universal uh, rank one more local systems, if you since points and trivializes along things, you get some trivialization. Now, so it's still things of a formal power series. Now, uh, what goes on? If we are happy, if uh, a central charge is rational, then something uh, very remarkable will go on. If, if the central charge will be rational, then what I will have, periods of real and imaginary part of my war form will be integer number. I will get a map from, from, a, from a variety to two-dimensional torus. Uh, because the periods will be defined up to integers. So, so class of alpha, real part of alpha and imaginary part of alpha and belong to cohomology of these integer coefficients. Uh, and maybe I assume also this mark. I also assume uh, uh, relative to also zeros. Uh, 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 let's consider all, um, not only closed periods, but all the zeros, uh, integer coefficients. It maps to the torus. And all my single, all my critical points map to, to the point zero. And what I get? I get a local system on a torus minus a punct minus one point. Uh, I get a, uh, so, uh, so the story will be vibration out, out on a to two-dimensional torus minus a, uh, outside of a point, and because everything is kind of C double complex of finite type, you can see the cohomology. I get a um, cohomology of fiber and fundamental group of torus minus a point. Free group with two generic, you can act on these two things. And then in this situation, one can calculate everything in terms of spectral sequence downstairs, and you get some kind of, in some uh, elementary things, you get contribution for positive octant as a rational map. Yeah, so, so we can uh, 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 assure that you get rational map uh, in this special situation. Um, 
uh, one can write some simple form in terms of two operators in finite dimensional space and uh, what, what is going on. Uh, now the question how one achieves this uh, position which is uh, have kind of complex manifold with complex variables and here there's a kind of final idea in all this topological arguments you don't does really need holomorph holomorphicity at all. What one needs is real part of one form and imaginary part of one form are uh, linearly independent outside of zeros. Independent at any point, y which is, is not a set of zeros. It's a very weak condition. It's, uh, uh, you don't need any holomorphicity at all. You just need complex, complex value to one form with this condition and you uh, very easy to change something with some sm uh, support outside of uh, zeros with uh, very small form. It doesn't, uh, with small factor, it doesn't change this linear independence. And then one can uh, move a little bit in, and uh, achieve the situation where the central charge is rational. And th in this non holomorphic situation, but uh, uh, the whole thing works, and then one gets uh, this proof of rationality. Yeah, I'll try to, I try to calculate very simple examples, uh, like a curve of genus 2 with one form, uh, and get this rational vet, vet, valued matrix, mat, matrix function. But they are so huge already in this example, I don't want to frighten you, but, uh, but they're huge but finite. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. What was the final okay. uh, conclusion with respect to the Ah, uh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, just write you a little formula. You have the torus, and essentially get vector space with two operators. Yeah, some kind of like this monodromia. And this monodromy, I don't know, it's operator T1 and T2. You get two automorphisms. And maybe you get some, some, some special fiber. And a commodity which you calculate, you make cell decomposition of the things and you calculate uh, something like uh, this complex. But this complex, uh, you also may be multiplied by some parameters like q1, q2, q2, q1, which will be very small. Uh, so you get uh, this bunch of uh, isomorphisms, but, th then, but then you identify this cohomology with, uh, talking about a uh, sorry. Ah, no, you do like this. You consider such complex. Uh, v goes to uh, these things, and you can identify this complex with V in two different ways. You say it's contained, uh, you take uh, this, qu uh, this quotient will be a cyclic complex of this type, or a cyclic complex of this, this type. Essentially what you, you do, this identification of isomorphisms will be something like this. It's obviously rational functions of q1, q2. And if t1, t2 depends on some parameters, it's also a rational function. Yeah, essentially it's reduced to simple calculus like this, and then it <laughs> the, and the, that's it, yeah. Maybe we should uh, have a break. Yeah, maybe it's a good idea, yeah. Uh,